Hey everyone, so it is no secret that I am a pretty big Star Wars fan. I mean, you watch my streams, Star Wars comes up quite often as a topic whether we talk about the games or the movies. It is the reason why I occasionally have Battlefront uh, on the background of my videos, as is the case today. I mean, I only thought it appropriate. And even the movies sometimes come up in discussion videos that I occasionally make. I honestly think the last one was on The Last Jedi, which was quite a while ago. Well, we are going to correct that today, because in today's video we are going to talk about the Rise of Skywalker, specifically the fears that I have about the Rise of Skywalker. I mean, it's no secret that I've not exactly been the biggest fan of the new trilogy. Uh, I will talk about some of the overall issues I have with it, but it's not my favorite, let me tell you. In fact, Last Jedi uh, was really a sour note for the series for me. It really, like Last Jedi, if you watch my last discussion video on it, really did not appeal to me. And it didn't appeal to a lot of people either. And honestly, a lot of us, including me, had some hope for Rise of Skywalker. I thought that it was going to be difficult for them to pull something coherent out of the mess that Last Jedi made. However, with the newest trailer and with some leaks that have been floating around, it looks like that is not going to be the case. In fact, if we believe these leaks, uh, we can say that Rise of Skywalker is probably going to be the messiest Star Wars movie ever released. And I'm really hoping they're not true, but if they are, I think Rise of Skywalker is going to be one of the most hated Star Wars movies since the prequel trilogies. Now, before we go into deeper discussion, be aware that about a month ago, a Reddit user named Jedi Praxis leaked, or supposedly leaked, the story of Rise of Skywalker. We don't know whether this is true or not. It could be completely made up, it could be not, but just be aware that I will be discussing these leaks. So, if you don't want anything potentially spoiled, uh, you can leave the video now because from now on I will be going into plot details, supposed plot details. Just whenever I say plot details or the plot from now on, just imagine air quotes around it because none of this might be true. It has the potential to be all false, but we'll go into it. The reason I want to discuss these leaks, even though they have been out for a month, is because unfortunately it looks like the newest trailer has confirmed a lot of the points from Jedi Praxis's leaks. I will leave a link in the description to his posts, but it seems like Rise of Skywalker is basically a messy fetch quest crammed into two and a half hours. Seriously, just in the first act alone, the characters go to like seven different planets to collect like five different items needed for various different things. Now, that is a problem. I mean, I think Rogue One is one of the better Star Wars movies under Disney, but even I'm completely willing to admit that Rogue One's biggest issue is that we simply were introduced to too many locations. We were jumping around getting some, like some planets were featured for like 5-6 minutes, never getting a good idea of where we are, what we're doing there, who these characters are, and it looks like Rise of Skywalker is going to be continuing that trend. Honestly, I think this is because Last Jedi honestly kind of left the series in a mess. Uh, a lot of main characters died, a lot of characters were injured, and we ended up with about 30 Resistance members left. And of course, we had no main villain, which Rise of Skywalker is attempting to fix. By what? By bringing Emperor Palpatine back. Now, this has its own kind of mess around it. So the fact that Emperor Palpatine is coming back is basically 100% confirmed. We know that he's coming back, However, in what form is the question? Now, when I heard his laugh in the very, very first trailer that was released, I think me, along with most other people, thought that he would be coming back in some sort of ghost form. And honestly, I wouldn't be against that. You know, maybe he unlocked some, you know, force ghost for Sith kind of type of deal, and he's like manipulating people from beyond the grave. I could get down with that. That wouldn't be the worst thing. However, if we go by Jedi Praxis's leaks, Palpatine is straight up alive. Sure, he's dying, sure he's on some like big life support robot machine thing, but he is just straight up alive. No worries with falling down into the reactor of the Death Star. Apparently you can survive that, apparently you can survive then the Death Star getting blown up. Hey, no big deal. 
Yeah, seriously. And honestly, when I read that in the leaks, I was like, okay, this is how I know these leaks are bullshit. As soon as I saw the fact that Palpatine is alive, I was like, okay, yeah, this guy is probably talking shit. He's pulling plot details out of his ass. There's no way this is true. However, if you look at the second to last shot of the new trailer, you see a hooded guy walking towards Rey on some weird life support robot machine thingy. Many people including me, assume that this is Palpatine. I mean, if this point is true and Palpatine is alive, I think that plot detail will be the most critical mistake that Disney Star Wars has ever made. Palpatine being alive essentially invalidates the entire original trilogy. It especially invalidates Luke's and Darth Vader's whole arcs. I mean, the whole arc of Luke is that he becomes a Jedi Master. By the end of the film, he is fighting Palpatine, but he's not fighting Palpatine, he's just resisting him. That in its entirety feeds into the fact that Darth Vader finally breaks free of Palpatine's grip, betrays him and kills him. That's the whole point of Vader's character, I would argue from the very first movie. I mean, as soon as Phantom Menace came out, we knew where Anakin's story was heading. We knew that he would become Darth Vader, but we also knew that he would be redeemed in the end. George Lucas has always said that the entire Star Wars saga has been about Anakin and Return of the Jedi's ending where he finally breaks free of the dark side is a perfect ending to that. He finally defeats his master who has been controlling him for decades. If Palpatine is still alive, that entire arc is thrown out the window because they were not successful. In the end, the Rebels weren't successful either. They blew up the Death Star, sure, but one of their secondary objectives, I would argue maybe even more importantly than destroying the Death Star, was killing the Emperor. All of that is thrown out the window just for some cheap shot of bringing a nostalgic villain back. And you know, I love Ian McDermott as Palpatine. I think he does a fantastic job. However, that villain, if he is brought back, should have been brought back in ghost form. There is no way it is believable that he would survive what happened to him in Return of the Jedi. And you know, the Emperor coming back is probably the most egregious error, but it is not the only one if we believe the rest of the leaks. Once again, we have super weapons. This time it's supposed to be an armada of Star Destroyers which have supposedly quote-unquote Death Star lasers on them and can destroy planets. Yeah, once again a super weapon. We have had super weapons in every single one of the episodes of the new trilogy. If you count the huge Star Destroyer from The Last Jedi as a super weapon, we do not need another planet destroying weapon. Once again, the way they supposedly defeat this fleet is extremely stupid. Apparently they destroy some command ship which prevents them from escaping the unknown regions, proving that the First Order is the dumbest enemy faction ever introduced to Star Wars. Yeah, it reads like bad fan fiction. Again, I'll leave it in the description so you can read the, read the plot details. Choose to believe what you want to believe, but right now it is looking bad. I mean, we have had confirmation with the latest trailer that they're literally going to be riding some weird alien looking horse on a Star Destroyer. Seriously, it cannot get more goofy than that. I mean, the old expanded universe had some shitty stories, but this would be on another level. Right now, it really feels like we have a whole Game of Thrones Season 8 situation on our hand. If you were not around or you don't watch Game of Thrones, Season 8's plot details were leaked. And for a long time, people were like, nah, this cannot be that bad. There's no way that any of this is true. And what happened? All of the leaks ended up being true and people, including me, were super pissed about Game of Thrones Season 8. There's nothing worse than when a movie series, a TV series, or anything like that ends with a pathetic final episode slash final season. And right now, with the Palpatine stuff, the Star Destroyer stuff, the riding on horses stuff, I'm afraid a lot of the leaks will be true. The only thing we can hope for now, I think at this point, is context. Supposedly there was a thing where End Wars plot details were leaked, and people thought it was shitty, but the context of the movie actually ended up making it a lot better. So right now I think that's the best we can hope for, that the context of episode 9 gives some weight to these weird plot details. The final thing I want to discuss is more around the overall problem I have with the new trilogy. I think the biggest issue with this new trilogy is that it seems like none of it was planned out in advance. 
like it really seems like Disney gave the directors whatever they wanted to do aside from a few very basic plot details like you gotta have Kylo Ren you gotta have Rey you gotta have this this and this it seems like they gave them complete free hand in what to do the biggest thing that I have that supports this conspiracy theory is the death of Snoke I mean the death of Snoke in The Last Jedi completely threw off this new trilogy I feel like because Snoke was the only villain that was threatening enough to actually be a main antagonist. I mean, Kylo Ren is just not. I mean, he's not an antagonist. I like Adam Driver, I like his performance, I think Kylo Ren is cool, but neither is he threatening nor is he powerful enough to be a serious antagonist. The same holds true for Hux and any of the First Order uh, jobbers or generals. Yeah, none of them stand out enough as villains. Snoke was the only one and they killed Snoke or I feel like Ryan Johnson killed Snoke which wasn't expected and now J.J. Abrams is forced to bring another villain back, an old villain back in some extremely convoluted way to actually have a final villain for the series, a main bad guy. Seriously, say what you want about the prequel trilogy but as I discussed earlier it had a very clear story arc. We could always tell that even though the movies were shitty, they had bad acting, some questionable special effects, uh, some questionable dialogue, it was at least going somewhere. I think people had more of an issue with how it got there, but the overall story of Anakin growing up, turning to the dark side, his fall, there's no issue with that. That whole arc is very satisfying. The same with the original trilogies, it had a clear arc. This new trilogy, like what is the overarching story? There doesn't seem to be one, like the First Order are pathetic but also incredibly powerful. The Resistance is not defined very clearly, we don't know anything about the government of the galaxy and now Palpatine is back. Uh, to me it really seems like the overarching theme of this new trilogy is just Rey. And she's powerful and she's cool and she's Rey, that's it. Uh, yeah, I am very, very, very worried about this movie. Hopefully I'm wrong, but I am going to not hold my breath until the movie comes out. My expectations are set low and hopefully they will be overturned and we'll actually have a good movie. Because I mean the issue with these movies never was about the looks, uh, speaking about that. I mean there is no issue with these movies in terms of the special effects, they're great. The acting is good, I feel like, like everything is there except proper plot and kind of soul I would say. Uh, even though the prequels are hated, uh, although less and less now, they at least had passion behind it. Here it really does feel like a Disney cash grab which is the same feeling I have with Marvel as well occasionally. Yeah, it's not good. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. What do you guys think? Have you seen the trailer? Have you seen the leaked plots? Are you still hyped for this movie? Uh, what are we gonna do if these plot leaks are true. I'm gonna be very disappointed and I don't think I'll be watching too many more Disney Star Wars movies after that. I don't even know if I'll see this one as well. I honestly don't know. We'll have to see. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. I think I'll have more discussion videos like this in the future. I enjoy making them. Thanks for watching guys and peace out. Goodbye.